In the past, there have been quite a few cases of me being surprised about how good a Xilence AIO turned out to be given its price. And maybe, or hopefully, it will happen again. This is Xilence's new LQ240 Pro or XC9A2 for whatever reason they have two names, but Xilence's new Pro 240mm AIO. But before we get any deeper into the whys and what's, let's see how it performs. While testing it on our standard CPU cooler benchmark machine pushing 135 watts through the socket, the LQ240 Pro performed, well, surprisingly well. At 49.2 degrees C above ambient, it performed marginally better than the Be Quiet Pure Loop 2FX, which is really freaking good. Compared to other 240mm AIOs, we have for example the Cooler Master Illusion and Kraken X53 ARGB, which were both beaten. And the only 240 which was able to outperform this sucker was the much thicker Arctic Liquid Freezer 240, and or 240 ARGB. Though that was not really a surprise given the thickness of the radiator. For the complete picture, the LQ240 Pro is definitely performing on the upper range of 240s. And it can be compared to an air cooler, like for example a Noxia NH-U12A, so really good so far. Well, surprisingly good so far. For the Noise 2 performance graph, it's going to be interesting because the fans silence slapped onto here are their newest and best and most universal XPF 120XB PVM. And right now, they are slapping them onto basically everything. Air coolers, apparently AIOs, and though there is no case yet, I'm pretty sure that the new the next silent case will come completely filled out with those suckers. But how is their noise to performance on top of a radiator? Well, relatively good. At high speed, the LQ240 Pro has quite a bit of headroom until it becomes slowly quieter to the level of an NZXC Kraken X53 and then makes a couple of shifts between that one and a Cooler Master Illusion. And from 50% of the fan's max PVM setting going down, the LQ240 has a noise to performance ratio pretty much identical to the Illusion or a Noctua NHD15. So compared to other 240mm AIOs, it is a bit like a 240 Illusion, but with quite a bit more of headroom. Overall, performance for a 240mm AIO is definitely on the upper shelf. It's just not exceptionally good, but very much respectable. But let's now take a closer look at the AIO itself. It comes in the usual Xilent style packaging with a bit of imagery and some short specs. And as far as compatibility is concerned, we are pretty much covered with AM4 and AM5 on Team Red and everything between LGA 1150 and 1700 for Intel, plus 2066 and 2011. Inside we'll find the AIO itself, some bags of installation material for AMD and Intel, some thermal paste, a PVM spinner for the fans, and this very handy PVM to SATA power adapter to let the pump run at full speed all the time. And believe me or not, but uh, you you should definitely use this because just let the pump run at full speed and you are good to go. In order to install the AIO on a LGA1700 socket, we need to position the provided 1700 backplate behind the motherboard, push the spacers onto the outsticking screws, take the LGA1700 brackets with the end pieces pointing inside and screw everything down. Over on AM5, we need to remove the pre-installed retention brackets, put some spacers on there and screw in the AM5 spacers in an outwards pointing position. From there, on both platforms, splash some of that thermal paste on there, hit that ship with the AIO and screw it in. Easy peasy. Just don't forget to slap the fans onto the red and that both need power. The fans and the pump. Speaking of it, as far as aesthetics go, the pump water block combo is definitely meant for the eye candy part of this thing. Using the 3 pin ARGB cable coming out of it, we can control the tiny amount of ARGB that is coming with this thing. A very subtle line is going all around the block and a lit silence logo and name is in the center. Not too much, definitely, definitely not too much, and a 
I think it's a relatively good implementation. It, it has no visible spots, the transitions are quite smooth, and I like it. But the thing about this combo is that it is massive. Like, I don't know yet how it looks on B-rolls, but in real, this this is one hell of a boy. It is, it is massive. And it's the same underneath. Touching the CPU, we have a massive copper plate. It, it's massive. For the tubes, we have 400 mm long ones that are sleeved and movable on the water block side. Nothing extra nowadays, and 400 mm is okay for a 240, though of course 450 would have been better. Given how massive the water block is, the red is yeah, really not. Being 27 millimeters in thickness, it is made out of aluminum and there is really nothing more to say about it. It looks well made, no cracks, bends or bumps, so, so good so far. And on a very short side note, I can definitely see that Silence and Be Quiet are sharing their radiator manufacturers. Like, this looks, feels, and I can guarantee you this is the same rat that they use on the pulp. I remember that line going across the radiator. I can guarantee you. It's just the last step of gluing Be Quiet on there. The stickers are it's stamped in and I remember but that was Be Quiet on there. That last step has not been done here. <laughs> it's a pulp. The fans, however, are surprisingly slow given how the AIO performs. As mentioned before, those are XPF120XB PVM fans. Those things are spinning at up to 1500 RPM while it's pushing 63.41 CFM. Now, unlike Xilence coolers or independent fans, it is only the AIO that specifies the maximum static pressure that these fans can push at. No clue why they do that or why this is the case, but it is. And the answer is only 1.58 millimeters of H2O. And I'm saying only because there is a radiator involved and this one doesn't look like it has the density of two trees standing in a field. Compared to fans on other AIOs, this is actually a pretty low static pressure, which doesn't necessarily mean that it will perform bad. It really doesn't, the graphs prove otherwise. It's just surprising. But hey, it's Exilence AIO, and until now, every one of them was surprising. So, uh, yeah, this one is too. On max performance, it was definitely one of the top dogs. Not quite Arctic 240, but pretty good. Noise to performance wasn't bad either. It was like an Illusion 240 plus some additional headroom. For the build quality, I really can't nag about anything specific here. Everything feels nice and sturdy. Nothing bends that shouldn't be bending. And the fans feel relatively okay too. And of course, everything feels sturdy. It comes out of the same factory as, as Be Quiet Reds, but okay. But the surprising part about Xilence AIOs was usually the price. And this time, I can get one of them for 71 euros and some spare change, which, damn, that's a surprise again. A liquid freezer, for example, will set you back slightly above 90, not even talking about the 110 euros that a master liquid illusion will cost. Quality, okay, really. Performance, good to very good. Noise to performance, good. Price, fantastic for a 240 AIO. So, from our side, absolute recommendation for anybody who is looking for a good 240 AIO, which turned out to be really affordable. But okay, this should be it for Xilence and their LQ240 Pro. At this point, a huge thank you to them for sending it over. On a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel membership, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good damn way to go. Additionally, you can rest are sure that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to write a book. Not a story, no really not, it's a translation book so that everybody knows what product names they mean when Xilin just casually switches to production line names instead of the official names that are written on the box, because, because using two names for the same product makes any sense at all. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Xilence LQ360 360 mil AIO. This one was a real surprise too. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye. That was almost my finger.